Hello, it's April 1st. I'm Matthew Ogden, and this is an LPAC breaking news report. Beginning next Monday, April 4th, a conference of the General Assembly of the European Geosciences Union will be taking place in Vienna, Austria. In a session dedicated to earthquake hazards, Pier Francesco Biaggi, a professor in the physics department of the University of Bari and the leading researcher on earthquake precursors in Italy, will be presenting the shocking evidence that shows that his Japanese colleagues possessed knowledge as early as March 1st of the high probability of a major earthquake hitting Japan within the following 10 days. The data was available and the warning was issued. However, no government agency existed with the power to act on and respond to this warning. The quake which Biagi's team forecasted did hit with deadly force precisely 10 days later. Professor Biagi and his team of researchers have been working for several years on the study of how changes in very low frequency and low frequency radio waves can indicate areas of possible future seismic activity. Using the method which this team has developed, Biagi reports that he can forecast within 10 days in advance with a higher than 80% probability that a major earthquake will hit a certain locale within a 100 kilometer radius. By analyzing radio signals radiated by ground transmitters and received on board the Demeter satellite, which was launched in 2004 by the French Space Agency to measure the relationship between ionospheric disturbances and seismic events, Biagi and his team monitor changes in the ionospheric and atmospheric low band frequency radio waves on the range of 3 kHz to 300 kHz. Biagi's team has been able to develop a method to eliminate the perturbations in these results caused by different naturally occurring sources of radio noise and isolate the normalized baseline amplitude for a given region of the planet from which they are able to measure changes. Over the past several years, Biagi's team has detected, within the monitored data of this low-band radio environment, conspicuous dips in the amplitude of this low-band spectrum at very specific points in time. These anomalies have been correlated directly with major seismic events, the cause of which is not yet clear, but which proves that earthquake prediction is indeed plausible scientifically, and underscores the importance of considering the interacting effects between Earth's radiative and electromagnetic environment and seismic activity, not to mention the usefulness of this sort of study for developing a more general understanding of lithosphere-ionosphere coupling. This work has confirmed in Biagi the commitment to the study and monitoring of earthquake precursors of this and related types to predict and warn of impending catastrophes. It was a precursor of this sort which indicated to Biagi's colleagues in Japan on March 1st that a major earthquake was on the horizon, the details of which Professor Biagi will report during his presentation at the Vienna Conference next week. In a discussion earlier today with a representative of the LaRouche movement in Italy, Biagi reported that had Japan possessed an active government agency with the powers of acting on such warnings which Biagi and his team of researchers presented, all the victims of the deadly earthquake and tsunami could have been evacuated and saved. Not only could the death toll of 11,438 people known dead and 16,000 still missing been almost completely avoided, and tens of thousands of lives saved by conducting an orderly evacuation a full week before the catastrophe. But even the so-called crisis at the Fukushima nuclear plant could have been avoided, with the warnings giving the engineers sufficient time to shut off the reactors, not 10 minutes in advance, but 10 days, ensuring the safe cooling of the reactor cores. It is not clear whether Japanese scientists did warn the government and nothing was done, or more probably, whether their warnings were turned down by the scientific community because of a reigning scientific oligarchy which rejects such cutting-edge research as what Biagi is involved in. But the broader point 
is that what is required to coordinate such an effort is an international organization of national government agencies, funded and directed from above, to track and monitor all of the known indicators which have been proven to precede a quake, and to have efficient evacuation and support plans in place to manage and avoid the deadly effects of earthquakes, volcanoes, and tsunamis. As Professor Biaggi stated in an interview with Austria's Der Standard, there is great progress in the research of quake indicators. We have good parameters and various phenomena that point to coming quakes. But all of that is documented only in scientific studies. There is not any state organization anywhere which would use these options for the forecasts of quakes in a consequent way. This is not the job of the universities, but rather of state agencies. So far, only data are collected. But it would be possible. We are already able to make forecasts. Biagi stated that if he were the head of NASA and could decide on programs to finance for earthquake precursors, he said he would immediately start a very selected program of nano-satellites, costing only around $1 million each. When compared with the size of the bailouts going to Wall Street and inner Alpha Group banks, the price tag for even an entire fleet of such satellites is nothing. But there is no government financing for it. As Biagi said, governments today prefer to finance other programs, such as studying the mating habits of polar bears, for instance. Biagi himself has had to finance his research through a personal loan which he took out from his local savings bank. In Japan, the situation is similar. The point is, as Lyndon LaRouche declared on the LPAC Weekly Report, if Barack Obama is not immediately removed from office on the grounds of Section 4 of Amendment 25, not only will he continue with his systematic dismantling of the existing space-based satellite monitoring systems and the manned space program generally, but he will block any efforts to reinstate the Glass-Steagall law, which would throw away the trillions of dollars in gambling debt in the interest of channeling full funding into the wartime-type top-down mobilization for earthquake detection and defense. For both of these reasons, Barack Obama has blood on his hands. Standing in the way of this type of scientific progress is genocidal in its effects. The responsibility for the lives of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, who have been and will continue to be lost due to earthquake and other seismic activity, rests squarely on his shoulders, as he continues to stand in the way of the implementation of urgent and fully possible earthquake prediction and preparedness programs worldwide. The LaRouche Pack basement team will continue to pull together a picture of the full sensorium of satellite and other monitoring equipment, which will be needed to continue the research which Biagi and his team are conducting, along with the multiplicity of other indicators, which mankind will have to be monitoring and cross-gridding if we are to adequately understand and predict the causes and occurrences of future seismic disasters and ameliorate their potentially devastating effects. This power is uniquely man's. As we enter a period of intensified solar activity, and more broadly as our sun and solar system swim into the uncharted and dangerous waters on the northern side of our galaxy, it will require the full mobilization of the creative powers of mankind to allow us to ensure that our species successfully avoids the fate of so many species which have previously gone extinct. And, in so doing, by pulling ourselves to the successively higher scientific platforms required to understand and ultimately to harness these great galactic forces, we will be affirming in ourselves man's divine mission to live and work as co-creators with the creator of our universe, managing it and improving it and subjecting it to our creative will. Stay tuned to LaRouche Pack for more. Signing off, this is Matthew Ogden.